Okay guys, I'm back and I have actually three cars to work on today, so I really didn't plan on filming. Uh, the first one here is this 2001 Hyundai Santa Fe with an idle problem. Then I gotta do this Expedition or Mercury with a misfire. And I gotta do this Cobalt here with some type of a fuel odor smell. So anyway, I wasn't going to film just because of time. And uh, I just think I'm going to miss a good opportunity here on this Santa Fe. So, symptoms with this vehicle is uh, intermittent high idle speed. The customer complains about the car kind of taking off on its own. No check engine light. And uh, my friend Pete here told me that there is no trouble codes when he looked at it. I found something different here. So, let me take you to the scan tool and we'll see what we got. Alright, so the codes in memory. We have coolant temp sensor high coolant temp sensor intermittent and uh, I'm actually happy to see these fault codes because that does match a potential for an idle speed problem you guys that are following along inputs or outputs involved with the coolant sensor one of them is the idle speed control or idle air control device and uh, I think this may match that so let's focus on the coolant sensor So I did a visual inspection and it looks like the coolant sensor lives down underneath. And again, this is just a visual inspection I did so far. Um, it lives underneath this connector right here that you can see on the camera. Right underneath that is a two pin connector that looks like goes into a water jacket. And I think that's it. I'm gonna go to my scan data next. And what we want to focus on is my engine coolant temp sensor that's showing 168 degrees. 165. And I'll tell you what, this, t this engine is definitely hotter than that. I just took it for a test drive, had it running for a while. What other data can I show you? Yeah, look how erratic that signal is. You can see it. It's changing from you know, 170 to 140 degrees and I'm not even doing anything. Alright, so I'm going to reach down while you guys are watching the scan tool. I'm going to reach down and I'm going to I'm going to um, just try to wiggle that connection at the coolant sensor. Hopefully without being burned, that's how hot this engine is. Watch the scanner. What the Hey, Bob. Made it drop to 130. I wonder if I can catch this with the engine idling. Let's try to do it with it running. And what we'll focus on is the idle speed. Just kind of listen to it while you're watching the uh, coolant sensor. And we can actually watch the desired idle in the ISC duty cycle right underneath. So I'm looking at, at uh, that pit there and this pit here. Uh, we'll just leave it there. You guys can watch it. I'll try to make this thing. Hey, look at the desired idle changing. You see that? As the coolant sensor voltage or degree Fahrenheit dropped, my uh, desired idle changed. I didn't even, I didn't even touch it. Well, this is, this is a perfect lesson as to idle speed and how it relates to coolant temperature. We're looking at it right here. This is without me even touching it. We can watch this uh, desired graph here too. And uh, let's do a custom here. All right, so I just did a little custom data display for you guys, and we can look at the relationship of all of these. That's pretty cool. As this temperature drops, that we see the desired uh, RPM changing, we see the RPM changing, we see the result of the idle speed control device. It looks like this is some type of a uh, bypass. I'm not totally sure on the type of device. Doesn't matter. You see these are all related. I'm surprised actually the cooling fan's even cycling on and off. 
you know, and how the engine computer knows when to turn it on when, you know, our coolant set, sensor circuit really not never got over 159 degrees and you heard the fan run. But that being aside, I'm, I'm gonna wiggle this and see if I can make it even lower. Now eventually there'd be a default for this. So now the question is, do we have a wiring problem or do we have a sensor problem? We definitely identified this as a coolant temp sensor fault that's causing it. Wiring or sensors coming up. The other thing I have to make sure is, am I at the right sensor? And what I can do is I can, uh, hopefully I like this, but given its location, and unplug it, you know, that wasn't even the right sensor. This, well, maybe it is. The one that's down here is a three wire sensor, the one that I'm tugging on right now. That's not a common design. Three wire means maybe half of it's for the gauge, possibly. And uh, I do mention this in my, in my textbook that there are ones like this. It's right next to this really hot rad hose. I'm gonna shut the car off. You guys saw, and again, it's weird the fan runs. Um, well, setting a fault code on this though, the computer would turn the fan on. Um, but you guys, you guys hear the idle speed, you saw the reaction. I'm gonna turn the car off. All right, so still watching scan tool data on coolant sensor circuit. What I'm gonna do, when, I don't really wanna pull a wiring diagram, guys, okay? So what I'm gonna do is unplug this to sensor that I think is the coolant sensor and watch scan data when I do it. Sorry that I can't get you guys down onto this. I'm just gonna have to watch the scan tool when I unplug this. Alright, that should be unplugged now. And what I want to see is that to be fixed one way or another. That's to be my scan tool I'm talking about. And what we're seeing is we are seeing a fixed voltage or fixed degree Fahrenheit of 114. So all that movement is now gone. Okay, so that means I did unplug the right sensor and really what we're looking at right now is a substituted value. That 114 degrees is a substitution. So a couple of voltage checks, measurements are going to be necessary I believe because I don't know the third wire it almost has to be for the gauge now it could be for the cooling fan directly too and maybe that's why the fan was running we'll have to check a diagram on this all right so I have the key on too and uh, my gauge is reading below cold right now I'm pretty sure that, that third wire is for the gauge so let me uh, just experiment here a little bit more before I show you this voltage measurement. I have the key on again, as I stated. I should be using my external mic and I'm not. I hope this audio is okay. I'm gonna plug this back in and I'll tell you what the gauge reads. Let me show you the gauge first right now. So you see the key's on, all the lights are on, and you see my temperature gauge. Now sometimes it's normal for a a temp gauge to read that way with just the key on regardless of temperature so I'm, I'm not sure this is going to prove that the third wire is for the gauge but I'm gonna try it I'm gonna go plug it back in all right 
That is plugged back in now. You see the scan tool is now going crazy again. Scan data. It's definitely my cooling sensor, no question about it. And what we're looking at again is a substituted value. What we should see, guys, is unplugged, this should go to minus 40, and then plugged back in, it would go to, you know, whatever the fault is, but sorted, sorry, let me back up. Open, unplugged, minus 40, sorted, it would read upwards of 300 degrees. So, substitutions. I should probably show you the global data as well. I think maybe we'll do that too. Um, gauge is where we're at. That's plugged in. Sweet. So without a wiring diagram, that third wire is definitely for the gauge. And I should be able to troubleshoot that this then rest of the way and explain the voltage readings I get without a wiring diagram. All right, one more thing before we start the measurements. Let's talk about that substitution again. You see this coolant sensor circuits all over the place. We saw the substitution go to 114. Now let's go uh, global. So I'll hit my home tab and I will stop talking to this vehicle. I'll change vehicles and then what I'll do is go OBD direct. And under OBD direct, it's gonna make me change keys. We'll go OBD diagnose. And we don't wanna start our communi well, start communication and it tells me what key to use, which is K20. I may be able to show you this just using global data, and that would be cool. In OBD2, the government uh, steps in and does all the mandating here. So one of the things they're not allowed to do is substitutions in here, and so we're going to use the coolant sensor circuit here, and actually what I'll do is I will turn these other data pids off because it'll help speed up this process. We're reading some fluctuations as we were in the factory mode. And I guess I can maximize this graph. It's really not necessary, but you see our min max and stuff. Um, now I'm going to unplug it again. Let you guys see what it does. Unplugged. It should read minus 40 now, unplugged on the global format. Sensor is now unplugged. That's awesome. So you see, actually, global data is helping me here more than the factory. And that 114 that we we're reading is substitution. And that's why I wanted to show you guys that. It's a good lesson on that. Um, so, really, what I need to do now to confirm wiring integrity, I mean, really, what this tells me is my 5 volt reference all the way out to my sensor is good. And uh, voltage was low. Let me, let me think about operation of this sensor for a second. So minus 40 on the global scan tool tells us that we have five volts showing on the engine computer right now. And um, I can show you guys that. I'm gonna do a couple unplugged measurements first. Okay guys, so I'm measuring the three different wires and I do have it unplugged. I'm just getting some preliminary measurements so I know what's what. And uh, I am not spreading these pins. I've said this many, many times that you never want to front probe a connector uh, and spread terminals apart. So this is just a very small pin. And the one to the right, I'm reading 0 0.01. The one in the middle, I'm reading 9.69. That's interesting. 9.69 uh, volts. That tells me that that is not the ECT signal circuit. That would be for the gauge. And then I'm reading the one all the way to the left. And, and the one all the way to the left here is reading 4.99 volts. That annoying sound in the background is a rusty bolt 
that Pete is trying to get out of some vehicle. All right, so plugged in back probing, the signal for the ECT then is this pink wire, and that's the one I really wanna focus on first. That's my five volt signal slash reference. And let me plug this guy back in. All right, that's my signal plugged in. And uh, it's pretty cool. We see the same erratic behavior that we were seeing on the scantle. You know, the voltage and scantle really match each other. Um, let you guys jump over to the scanner again real quick and uh, be able to see that. And that is plugged in. You see it's all over the place. And go back to the sensor home and the graphing meter you see that same voltage fluctuations those should not be there guys okay we're jumping around a good bit and so what we want to make sure really before we condemn this sensor is just that our sensor ground is okay and um, and that's plugged in right sensor ground plugged in so we want to move this over to that ground See when I get into that ground circuit how smooth that line got to and uh, let me pause that back up for a second you see over in here where my cursor is blinking I was not making contact and then right here I'm making contact and then not again and then this smooth line right here of 0 0.02 sorry 0 0.02 that is a good sense of ground it's nice and steady let me unfreeze that uh, this is just very, very simply a bad coolant temperature sensor. Um, the other thing too that really said the sensor ground was good is that uh, the gauge was never erratic. The only problem was the coolant sensor circuit was erratic and that was causing my idle to jump up and down. And uh, I already showed you guys the unplug test, so the last part would be, depending on which direction you attack this, um, the last part would be just simply unplugging the sensor and making sure you have five volts available. And I'll do that one more time just for you guys. Because I like to work hard. Ground tests with the sensor unplugged are no good. want to make sure again that you have five volts av available here on the sensor and uh, that is unplugged right there steady five you can tug on the harness and pull on it make sure that that's not dropping out and it isn't and I realize that's an unloaded test but this is a very 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 low current circuit it's really not even measurable so if that that sensor signal wire was corroded in any way I would be seeing drops on my meter just simply from my voltmeter that would be loading the circuit um, there's enough of a load from the meter itself and that little drop right there was just my pin moving I can duplicate that by moving the pin so that is a good circuit bad coolant temperature sensor causing a high idle speed complaint. Interesting that there was no check engine light, but I did have codes. And I guess the other final comment again is don't forget to use your global OBD2 to guide you and help you in doing stuff like this. Um, actually, I can show you guys one more thing since I mentioned it. Notice we're reading minus 40 right now, right? And my my pin is still in the signal circuit. If I ground that circuit, this is going to show maximum temperature the opposite direction. I'll just show it to you. I'm just gonna take these two, touch them together, okay? And to do that, 
get a little creative here. Actually, what I can do is just do this. Take the signal wire right here that's attached to my pocket screwdriver, and I'll just touch it over here on the battery. You guys see what I'm doing. I'll just touch it over here on the battery and fully ground it. So I'm grounding the, the, um, the signal circuit, also known as the reference on thermistors. And what we want to see is that temperature should go through the roof the other direction. And it's lower than I expected. What's that say? 284 degrees. So a nice, easy, quick and dirty test for the signal circuit on a thermistor is you unplug it, should read minus 40, you ground it, and it should go the opposite temperature, a lot higher than the engine would ever go. But remember, using factory, data they like to substitute things so i'll show you that test one more time in the factory mode all right so this is the factory one again and a little bit different uh angle here for you guys um factory one what we want to pay attention to is my coolant temperature sensor that's this ect right here of 96 degrees i do have it unplugged already so this is already a default value and if I ground this circuit, which I'm doing right now, I see zero change on this sensor. So you talk about doing wiring integrity tests using factory data, if all you have available to you is the degree Fahrenheit, man, it can get you in trouble, can't it? This is open right now, there, there's five volts on the tip of this, sensor's unplugged, and when I ground it, Again, no change whatsoever, 96 degrees. Interesting that the, the default number changed. My only um, suggestion for that would be that would be based on this intake air temp sensor. And ignore the min-max numbers here. They are uh, very, very narrow, so there are no spikes in that. But that would be why this was, ECT was 114 before, and now is 96 as the intake air temp cooled off. So substituted values things we need to worry about all right so this is actually going to be good for us in class to use and to reinforce thermistor circuits reinforce substituted values and really the integrity testing section this is one of the reasons I lumped all those chapters together I did uh, thermistors potentiometers uh, pressure sensors those are the three main topics I talk about in my book and then I talk about substituted values, the reference circuit, and integrity testing. And all six of those chapters, really, I, I could have put them all in one. And uh, this is a really, really good reinforcement for that. Hope you guys like that. I know my camera angles weren't all that great. I have two more cars to do, and I'm just trying to get out of here. So thanks for joining me, and uh, I'll see you next time.